Welcome back to Pilled Focus. We are continuing our series of interviews with the filmmakers involved in this year's Deep Fried Film Festival. And today we are joined um, by Otto Logan, who is all the way from LA, and we're going to be hearing about his film, The Customer's Always Right. So, hi Otto, can you tell us a bit about yourself and your filmmaking background? Yes, yeah, so um, I'm an independent uh, film producer and uh, writer and editor. And Sometimes, in this case, director. And um, yeah, we, in this case, I was working with uh, my co producer, Amanda Callis, and she and I had this great idea to use some of her stand up sort of contacts. She'd done a lot of work in stand up and Bob Billion style shows. And um, the idea was to put normal people in situations that they were accustomed to, but put stand up people in them. And that's how this sort of came about. Um, and uh, we did a lot of different uh, shows, uh, clips and things like this out of it. And then eventually uh, we got to this short. And um, in this short, yeah, it, it's, uh, I think Brian Valdez, who's holding the box, is, uh, you know, I think this was a first time uh, acting job for him. I don't think he had ever done it before. So it was just great. And uh, we gave them a few pointers and they just went with it. And uh, this is all one take. So it's amazing that they were able to do it that, that quickly and, and that, you know, just perfect. Everyone knows exactly who these guys are the moment the first frame comes in. And that's, you know, as a filmmaker, what you hopefully can get. I mean, it's just perfect. So what was the, the most enjoyable part of the experience making the film? It was really seeing them act. I mean, you know, sometimes, you know, as a, as a filmmaker or a director, you really have to stand in there and, you know, do another take and another one and another one because it just isn't clear. But these guys were just perfect. I mean, they, they knew exactly what they wanted to do. I mean, I do think we did about three or four different takes, but they were all completely different. And um, they were all great. I mean, it was just such a great thing. And as an editor coming in there and, and trying to figure out, oh, my goodness, how am I going to put this together? It was great. So you had a few different hats like, on making this. Make. So the oh, yeah. inside, direct, and where... Where did you get kind of your, your motivation to keep going and, and work through all these different areas of the, the, the film piece? Well, I, I think it's just trying to keep the crew as lean as you can. I mean, we have done some productions this year that have been really huge for us. I mean, you know, and then the, the problem is, is that it becomes more and more as the production grows, it becomes less about, you know, the, the sort of stand up impromptu nature of it and more about some of the technical things. Like, you know, so we tried to, in these cases, avoid all of that, cut out as many people as we could. And I think, yeah, it, it really works, I, at least at least for me. I mean, uh, but it's, it's a, a great way to shoot things where you're trying to really focus on something. Hey, I, I could see this at a stand-up show, but it's a little more than a stand-up show in the sense of there's a little bit more production design, a little bit more, you know, editing, there's sound effects, stuff like this. And that's how it came together. And you mentioned the the technical side there, and it is quite different. Um, the sort of the effect that you have throughout the film. What inspired you to take that point of view for it, rather than have it as sort of a real life sort of image? Yeah. So what was the, the main thing was is to try again, yeah, so you could see like in this still. What's great about them is this sort of rotoscoping sort of. Uh, effect on live actors and we're not trying to hide that they're they're real people and uh, this uh, voice was recorded directly from the, uh, the original footage but the idea is to put them into a green screen room shoot them add in you know the backgrounds and different details and stuff like this and it really just kept it as, as small as possible so uh, that's really what we were aiming for we could just take up stand-up people who we knew or we could take in this case actors who we we gotten to know bring them in and you know just have them have them do it and that was great so how long have you been working in film we started working i started, i came out to la in 2013 and um when i came out here uh you know i was more of a technical person i had done much more tech than i had done any kind of you know on the, in front of the camera stuff or even close behind the camera stuff and um yeah so i would say from about that time and well you're in la you're in the middle of Scotland, our perception of filmmaking in LA is quite glamorous, it's very big budget and everything. What is the film industry like over there? Well, for independent I, I filmmakers. 
for independent filmmakers, it's pretty bad. I mean, I think that, I mean, I, I can't say that LA is, is the best place for this right now. I mean, the talent is certainly here, but I feel like there's a lot of regulations. You know, the permit office, Film LA, can be very difficult for independent filmmakers. Some of the requirements are very difficult to budget. And um, I feel like, you know, there's a giant hole here left in the COVID. And, uh, you know, it's it's getting better. It's it's certainly, you know, people are coming back. But, um, you know, it's going to take the industry a while to, to recover from this, especially here. Because, you know, a lot of restaurants, a lot of side gigs that people would have are gone. And, you know, it's, it's, it's a struggle. So, you know, I feel like a lot of people, you know, sacrifice a lot to come here. My sort of advice would be, you know, come when you really have a plan. You know, I think it's, it's dangerous in this kind of an economy to come and just think things will work. <laughs> I think that that uh, might not be the best idea. But, you know, I mean, I'd love to set up shop in Scotland. So, and you guys, <laughs> you know, anything. I mean, LA is, uh, you know, it's, it's, a bit, it's a bit tricky sometimes. Yeah, but you've got better weather than us. <laughs> we have midges well, we and sun and snow and rain all in the same day. Um, it's a, a diff, quite a different environment. We'd love the beach sometimes. Um, thank you yeah. so much for joining me today. We've okay, got so um, customers okay, always right. It's going to be on as part of the the Deep Fried Film Festival online and in person. So it'd be great to get people's reactions and its audience votes to um, to reach the the winners. Um, for now. Thanks for watching. Keep watching Full Focus and we'll see you soon.